All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Sharon said, we're looking at some things that were maybe new to you in 22, and we are going to go over sort of a, a greatest hits list of some of the, the new features that we, we added as well. So today's agenda, that's exactly it. Review them and highlight some new stuff. Uh, what I am going to do is we're going to kind of mix them up a little bit. So, you know, what was new, what was what seemed new rather than sort of blocking them off. So we'll review, we'll highlight and we'll see how it goes from there. So as Sharon mentioned, what over over 100 new features. So student manager, we had about 62 new features added this year. Ace Web, 38. So Got that source too. Sharon mentioned the forum. If you are not subscribed to the forum, I encourage you to do that. And we're going to take a little look here just so you can see exactly how it looks. So the our forum will give you all of the student manager updates, uh, ACE web updates, and also if you have the quick pick module, I, I update that as well. So if you haven't created an account here, do so. Once you have, if we look, let's see, student manager knowledge base, not what, oh, <laughs> I clicked the wrong one. Student manager updates, that would be helpful. If you have an account, if you haven't done so already, scrolling down to the very bottom, there is a link that says subscribe forum. And if you do that, anytime something is posted, so once a month when student manager is released, you're gonna get an email and it says, there's been a new forum posting and you're gonna click the link and go, cool, what, you know, what's, what's in here? And it'll list any new features as well as any bug fixes. Same goes for Ace Web. So there we go by the numbers. So this is gonna be a little bit of a catch all general stuff that uh, is either new or you know, we, we, you know, somebody thought, well, wait, was that new? No, it was to me. So maybe, maybe it'll be to you as well. So generally speaking, password maintenance, for those of you who kind of you, the, the keepers of the flame, keeper of the flames, I can't remember which one, where, where we pluralize, but uh, this, you can, you can have more secure passwords. So up to 29 characters, upper and lower case numbers and symbols. This is a perhaps new to you. This is not a new feature this year. I believe it was last, last year. Another thing, if there's a plus sign, if you see a plus sign on a screen, you can add on the fly. So things like interest codes on a name record, there's a plus sign. Well, you know, we've got this new interest. Uh, let's go ahead and create a code from here so we can start tracking it. Once you add it, of course, it is available going forward. Things like fees, if we're adding new fees. And also on the course record, I think just about everything on there has a plus sign. This is a very small piece of it, but departments or catalog codes, coordinators, accounts, all kinds of fun stuff there. So if we see the plus, we can add it. Now, this is new. Uh, Matthew expanded the code type drop down. So if we were to go like module codes, or if we use the add edit codes button on the quick launch screen, the code type drop down now goes like the full length of that screen. Uh, it used to be what, like three or five of them, but now it is much, much easier to see. You still have to scroll down some because of course we have a lot of code options, but hooray, it's easier to read. Let's talk about reporting. We're gonna look at what's new first. Things that are pretty, pretty important, pretty big deals with it. One is now you can also email individual transcripts. We had the ability to do certificates or invoices, but now you can also send individual transcripts. Keep an eye on this bottom one. So the okay and the cancel buttons on your gray report option screen are switched. Uh, the, the rationale behind this was, well, it's, it's okay and cancel everywhere else. So why did it say, well, it was cancel and okay on reports? So, uh, you know, if, if you've recently updated and it's, it's, you know, it had been a while, 
and you get ready to run a report, you think that you hit the OK button, and then you just get back to the home screen, chances are really good. Keep an eye out for this. Make sure that we we all have to you know, change, change the behavior there. OK is on the left. Cancel is on the right. As we continue in the after times, rather than the before, hybrid courses, in-person and virtual has become much more common. People really like that setup. And since we have the hybrid course type, we need a way to know, well, who's meeting in person or you know, physical attendees versus virtual. So we do have a roster that is available that will separate folks for you. So physical attendees, virtual attendees. If you don't have this in your system, it is a name roster. So it would be uh, 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 in a couple of different places. One under reports, registrations, rosters, name roster, or control R, or it is also a quick report. Go ahead and sort by type over here, find my course. Under quick reports, name rosters, it is an additional report down here at the bottom. So if you don't have it, you can get that from our website. You can also ask your tech, we'll send you a link so that you can separate folks out. Also, pretty neat little thing. If you're running your quick reports for hybrid courses, you can actually select whether you want only in-person or only virtual, which makes things a little easier. So back over here in Student Manager, I've got name roster, I have additional selected, I say okay, and it is hybrid course. That is the name of the report. And it'll ask, do you want everyone? Do you want just physical? Do you want just virtual? So maybe I just wanted a list of everyone in person because you know what, the, you know, we don't necessarily care as, as much. You know, we may have a lot of people join us virtually, but who's, who's actually in the room, you can select just physical and get that. Any questions so far, are we good? You're good. Um, cool. Lindsay and I found out from folks that we, I had the chat disabled for them, oh, but it should be open for everybody now. So All right. carry on. Cool, cool. So next up in reporting, the reports menu. So at the very top of student manager, when you, you know, go to reports and you can check all of, you know, select your reporting areas. Down here at the bottom now is that report area guide help. Hooray. That's a pretty great thing, right? Because, you know, well, I, I need to run this report and why, well, you know, it's, it's going to be about money, but I also need registrations and I'm, I'm not really sure where, where to go or, or what to do. And, and there's just a whole lot there. So in student manager reports, report area guide help is actually going to bring up your help guide report. And I'm just going to search for it here because my default browser is not this one, but that's okay. Point is, we'll get to see it here going to land you on the report area guide to uh, the menu. We'll actually show you where everything is. Cool, so we've got that. Hey, while we're here, if you haven't bookmarked our online help guide, aceware.com forward slash SM help, I encourage you to do so. We have basics. We've got a whole left-hand navigation over here. So if you're a new user, or you've, you've used it for a while and thought, you know, there's probably a lot more I could be doing. You could come in here and look at, you know, basic information. Screen layout is one of those fantastic, fantastic uh, tools. So, you know, we've got course screen, you know, names, all of them are there for you. If you aren't sure what a field name is, so maybe you're modifying a report, you can come over here, hover over with your mouse, it'll tell you what it is. So that's the, uh, the official name in the background. And also you could click on it and, all right, so I know I get 35 characters. I know it's character. It's gonna tell us what it is. And if there's something about you know, this specific, in this case, the code or the dates or whatever it is, if there's more to know about it, you'll also have a link here to go in and check out you know, preferences or whatever it might be. So use the help guide, it's lovely. Cheryl has done amazing work on keeping that up to date. So what else? New to you, perhaps, in reporting. Maybe you don't know about these things. Function keys. I love function keys. We all love function keys, right? 
Have we seen this one before? Does anybody know which function key this might be? Which, you know, little quick report, if you want to put that in the chat, we'll, we'll sit over here and play like half the Jeopardy theme song or, you know, maybe like a, a you know, a few seconds of it. Just kind of sing it in your head while someone's putting in the answer. Don't be shy. Waiting. Okay, I'm just going to give it away. It's going to be spoilers over here today. This is the F7. This is the pay grabber report. So from just the home screen in student manager, if we hit F7, this will look up payments for you quickly. So you're not going into reports and accounting and all of that. It'll let you, you know, look on the screen, you can print it, you can export to Excel. So if if maybe, you know, you you've submitted uh, you know, a, a cash box report or something, you've sent it over to the accounting office and they're like, well, you know, we were we were trying to, oh man, I can't remember the word, not Reconcile. Yes, reconcile. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was going to say it's not justify. Uh, if you're trying to reconcile and and maybe there's actually a you know a payment missing, they they saw something in your payment gateway. You know, a certain there was a credit card transaction for you know fifty dollars or whatever it is, and they you know well it was between November first. You just type those dates in, and I don't know what's today, the fifteenth. You know, you could put in the dates, the payer name, the type, you know, payment amount, whatever it is. And it's going to check and any payments that meet the criteria are going to be here for you. And then you can double click on the name. It'll take you to the name record. You can get in to edit the registration and figure out what's going on. So really, really fun function key. A Function key, right? Fun, terrible, terrible. I, the, the jokes don't always work. So, <laughs> and applause, applause to Lisa. <laughs> she got that one. Yes. All right, Lisa, you're up. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna extra quiz you here. Do we know what this one is? Anybody? Bonus points to Lisa or anyone if we know what it is. This one, I will say, I I don't think this is used very often at all. All right, David mm -hmm. got it. This is your F four function key. It is super cool. So think about, I need to run a report for all registrants in, you know, French one who paid, you know, the early bird fee. There are a ton of ways to do that, but you could also just use F4 and you could put part of a course number in, in the top. So remember blue, yellow, green, right? Blue is names. Yellow courses, yellow and blue make green, which are your registrations. So if I were looking for a specific course number or maybe a course type, right? In the drop down, uh, you know what? I'm looking for membership courses. And, you know, down in the fee description, I'm interested in people who paid annual membership. But you know what? Only if they enrolled between like September 1st and October 31st or something like that, right? So you can you can look at, it, it can get very granular using this and it's just one key that you're hitting. And let's see if I have anything at all showing up for that. Uh, there are some, you can use some extra fields. You can set some custom conditions. If you are curious to know what those are or if you're trying to run this and you think, well, it would be great if it also included blah, ask your tech about it. It may be we can put a little custom condition in there for you. Also, you can send this out to Excel. We all love exporting to Excel, so that is available for you. Uh, you can look at extra fields if you need to, whatever it is. Let's try it, see if I get anything. And it tells me nothing, so eh, go figure. But know that this is here. Nothing matches that either. It's fun, right? Just go ahead and check this out. What about this? It, so lots of different criteria. You could look for everyone, you know, who lives in a specific city who took a course and paid a certain amount. So I, I can't, I can't say enough great things about this one. All right, back to here. Okay. So names, we're going to play a little bit of, is it new? Is it new to you? I know you're all very excited about this. First one is the special button. There is a button on the name screen on the right hand side that says special. This button 
will let you log contact history. You can log callbacks. You can search for a name. You can make an instructor out of the name record. Or there are some custom routines for more information, including custom program pricing and you know all of that. Contact your technician. So when we hit, when we click on special, these are the options we get, right? Again, contact history, call back, search for a name, make an you know, instructor record, and bye-bye, I don't actually need this. So is it new or not? What do we think? How about some hand raising? Raise your hand if you think it's new. All right. We've got a few who think it's new. Y'all, this is actually not <laughs> new. It, again, this is like super overlooked. I got to tell you, so so before I joined Aceware, I was the keeper of the flame at a university here in Dallas, and I never used this button. And then I, I, I joined Aceware, and this is actually one of the buttons that we use uh, when logging contact information with, with our customers. We actually go in here, and we click on special, and we'll use contact history. And the coolest thing happens. Also, PS, if you see lots of the same name in your system, you might want to combine them. But click on special, contact history. It automatically moves you over to the comments and history tab, and it logs today's date and the, the username of the person signed in so that you can put the history in here. You can report on this kind of stuff later. Uh, it's also just a really great way to keep track of what's going on. So check out that special button. It's It really is pretty cool. It is, it is yes, take advantage of that one. So not new. Next up is selecting a staff member in the email options. So we can send, of course, a, a quick email to a student by double clicking on their email address. If the email is in there multiple times, you will get a warning, okay? At the bottom of that screen, there's the also send me a copy. So however you're signed in and your email address. And there is also a drop down to over on the right hand side that will pull up a list of all student manager users. So, you know, Ace, Bob, Chuck, Matthew, everyone is in there. Is this new? Anybody want to take a guess? Raise your hand. All right, we got Nancy. Anyone else? So new or new to you? This is so is this new in 22 is what she's asking here. Ah, yes. New in 22. It is Nancy. new. <laughs> Yes, this is a new feature. And it is also in other email areas. It's not just in names. So yeah, this is a super, super cool feature. So, you know, Sharon asks me to send an email to Charlie and she wants to, you know, also get a copy of it. Super easy to do. We just go in here, write our little email. Sharon, you're in here, I bet. Not in here, this is an old demo, I gotta say. So we'll just do this one. So also send here and subject. And once we have that there, and also send me a copy, I should get a bunch of them. And we click on send. All right, so I got a copy because I wanted one and also the staff member got a copy. So take advantage of that one. All right, next up, callbacks. On the name record, it's on the demographics tab on the right-hand side. A callback is on name records and instructor records. And there's also on courses, there's like a course reminder notes that, that works the same way. You can remind staff on a specific date to hear me out, call back a student or instructor, uh, or also, you know, email them, enroll them, send a contract, whatever it is. So you're, you're setting this reminder on a date for someone. And 
there is a preference to check for callbacks on startup, or you can also check later under tools. So over here in student manager, demographics tab, right hand side, you can select a person, enter a date, save it. And now the first place we would see it, well, since I'm right here, under tools, there is list student callbacks or also control B. If there are any callbacks, they're gonna be here. The date, who it is, who to call, you know, phone, cell, any, uh, the, the call note or the history. So you probably wanna put something in the note, right? Like, oh, you know, do this, call Lindsay, ask about something, whatever. That's gonna be there for you. Once you've done it, you can actually set this clear column all the way over to the right. You would just put a Y there. You can print this list. I like paper. So sometimes having that and I can just check off every name as I go along, that's gonna be there. And of course, you can set the callback for someone else. It doesn't necessarily have to be you. In your preferences in Student Manager, on the Names tab, there is, let's see if I remember where it is. There is something on here. Uh, let's see, bottom third-ish in the middle, it'll go back a certain number of days. You can set it to check old callbacks. Ah, it should be, maybe that's the only one we have now. So if you aren't using callbacks, you may find that those are useful. That's the moral of that story. And is it new? Is it new? It is not new. So yeah, callbacks have been around for quite some time. Looks like we have a question. There was a question uh, about yeah, what build uh, this. So I'm, I'm looking at that. Go ahead and okay. carry on and I'll post that when I find it in the forum. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Next one on the name screen is email a link to pay an outstanding balance. That is over on the right hand side, right next to the email address. So what this does is directly from the student's name record, it will send an email that will give them, here are your courses, you owe us money, click here to go pay. And you can modify the email template. Uh, this is one that is in the system. If it's not, we can send it to you to import. It's a very, very basic email. Actually, I'll send one here in a second and show you. That'll just tell them, you know, you owe, click here, go, you know, go pay. And that is available if you wanted to download it yourself. If you're comfortable doing that, it is over on our website under email templates, or we can send you a link or we can help you with it. So what happens with that? Is on the name record email link to pay outstanding. And then we get this, it all, you can, you can use HTML. When we send it, and you know what, I'm, uh, I'm gonna send it to Chuck too, send him a copy so he knows that I, I did what I said I would do. And once it's sent, they receive, you have a balance with us, please use the link to log on and pay your balance. All the way down, I owe a lot of money, folks. I'm just kind of, taking courses. There is a link, you click on it. It will take you directly to AceWeb. Log in and there it is. So anywhere I owe money in red, you can just check the boxes and pay. And it just goes through the uh, the whole payment process, song and dance, that you would do um, for even if you were just enrolling in a course. And so you still get a confirmation. All of that goes just the way it normally would. Mm -hmm. Is this new? New to 22? Oh, no, this is not. Yeah, so this is not new in 22. But in 22, there is something new with uh, sending a link to pay outstanding balances, and that is for groups. So from the name record, you can send to one person. Here's the money you owe us. But 
on the registration screen on the right hand side, there is email link to pay group balance. So this one will send it, you know, a link with all the balances in a specific group. And it is also logged in the in, in CRM so that you know that you emailed folks. It'll be sent to the proxy. So if you look below that button uh, down toward the bottom of the screen in red where it says registered by, proxy, uh, it's, a, it's a feature that's used in ACE Web. That's one that you can turn on or off uh, where basically I can enroll other people, right? So that's something that you can also assign in Student Manager. It doesn't have to go through ACE Web. But as long as you have that set, if you've assigned the proxy, it will show up for folks, uh, the, the everyone in, in the group, kind of like that. So just to give you an idea of how that looks, I think I already have an example in here. You would get in the group email the name, what the course is, how much is due. You know, every, anyone in the group is going to be there for you. Oh, hey, speaking of proxies, you know what's really cool? And this is this is new, and I might be giving this away. I can't remember. So with the report wizard, if you have that proxy assigned to the registration, you can refund to the proxy's escrow. So rather than you know refunding with the refund wizard to the payer or escrow associated with you know the, the, the payer on there, if someone else has enrolled them, you can send it to their escrow instead. That way money stays with the with the payer. So where it says refund to payer, I guess now we need to have it say refund to registrant perhaps or registrant's escrow. Um, but that is there for you. And once we've clicked OK over there, you also get prompted. And this is whether we're refunding to proxy escrow or just using the refund wizard. Hey, you're refunding this course for this amount. The registration is going to be adjusted. So you know we, we set our, our fee adjustment you know, what we're refunding, whether we're canceling, all of that fun stuff. And then if we continue, when you're using the, the proxy escrow, there's going to be a note on the registration record saying the payment was refunded to the proxy. So questions on that? I'm going to nope. bounce over and show you in the, the live system here. Uh, we'll go to Lucy. Uh, 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 you see, we've got proxy assigned here. I'm just going to go ahead and I don't want to run a payment on that. Uh, if we look, come on, there it is. So I, you know, did the refund wizard over here. And there's actually still some money paid, so we can do it again, right? Proxy's escrow, only the current payment. Maybe I don't want to cancel it, but I still have to, you know, put something on here, right? So the original registration note is still there, but now the next one, so it's just gonna tack that one on as well. Do you want it to be adjusted? Yeah, sure, why not? Hey, you sure you wanna do this? Yes, or else I wouldn't be clicking all these buttons. And then, so it just goes through and it is there in the registration note. But as long as, talking about payments, The payment screen has been overhauled. It has been changed. It has been updated. So when we click on payments, we now see everything right there. So it used to be you would just have all the payment information. There would be this button that said, click it to see additional payment info. But now it's a tab. So just like name records and course records and instructors and registration records, we added some tabs over here as well, main and additional info. And that additional info tab shows you your user defined fields if you're using those, any payment notes, transaction numbers, IDs, all there is a nice little tab. So, you know, easier to find, I think, and also easier to, to read. You have a question here, Lindsay. Yeah. When you transfer an escrow to proxy, mm -hmm. how do you apply it to another student? Mm. Great question. Great question. Let's, um, so it went over to the proxy. So that would be me. Uh, uh, uh. And so I'm sure I have 
quite a bit of escrow. I've got all, you know, plenty of that there. So now we've, we've canceled it, sent it over to me. We, you know, canceled Lucy's and maybe now we want to enroll Charlie. Why not? He can, needs all the classes he can get. So he owes us money. You can find a name on the payment screen over on the right-hand side, find name. And I'm gonna be the one to pay. And it, well, <laughs> it should, you know what? This is a really good question. I gotta say, I'm actually not, we're gonna test this. So you can find a name and it's actually not letting you from there, but what you can do, all right, and probably this is not how we, we thought it would, um, it, it, it's, it's thought out much better. So, so hear me out. This is actually how it works. You would go to the person, you'd go to the proxy. So all the money always stays with the proxy, right? This is, this is really the way we wanna do it. We would find that you know, registration and in payments, there's a button here, this makes way more sense, to transfer a payment, transfer payment escrow. It's a great little, little button here. If we click on that, you can choose to transfer money to another registration. So this is how if we enroll someone else, but we wanna take that money you know, from, from the proxy, let's say we're transferring a partial payment to another registration, right? We're gonna send it over to Charlie and we're gonna, you know, we'll, we'll be real generous with $18 here. And then we would process, this is gonna pull up a list of everyone who's registered uh, look at the, if you look at the top here in the last 30 days, you know, who has a balance, you can actually change this number, go out, you know, however far you need. Uh, you could also search, there's Charlie. And now it's going to tell you, you're doing this, you're sending, you know, 18 bucks over to his. So, all right, great, do it. And so now the amount that I had in escrow is less and 18 bucks ought to be on Charlie's record. And there it is. So recap there, if you are trying to, if we've refunded to the proxy, the money stays with the proxy so that what we have to do the next time we want that person to pay for another registration is on the proxy's record, there's a transfer payment escrow button. And this is where you would choose how much money you want to send and you're going to be selecting to another registration. So whether it's the entire payment or partial payment, that's how that's gonna work. Hopefully it's about as clear as a mud puddle now rather than just thick mud. So payment screen overhauled, covered the proxy part of it. Hey, what about Ace Web? We're, uh, we're plugging along here. Is there anything new in 22 with Ace Web? Oh, that slide. Uh, anything new to you? So, AceWeb, AW Storm, AceWeb Student Online Reporting Module. There is a module that comes built in with AceWeb that allows students, when they're logged in, to view and print their certificates, their transcripts, and their receipts. If they've paid, if they haven't paid, they're not getting a receipt. So this was already in existence. This is, so if, if it's the first time, this, this might be new to you, but in 22, new in 22, it also works with proxies. So down here in the bottom half, all registrations I have entered. So it used to be, it could only be mine. It could only be my certificates. I'm logged in, print my certificates, print my transcripts. So, you know, if, if I enrolled other people, I can't get to that information, but now I can. So if I were to look at, you know, certificates, if I selected all registrations I have entered and then I clicked on certificates, certificates available for everyone I've enrolled in fine print, if they're allowed to get their certificate, right? What do I mean by that? On a registration, let's go to Charlie, that's the first one I see here. On the left-hand side, around the middle, there is a dropdown that says get web certificate. It defaults to no, 
right? Because the idea is you're going to get your certificate, like, I don't know, after the class ends or maybe on the last day, you shouldn't be able to get a certificate before it even starts. And you're like, oh, no, I totally went. Here's my certificate, right? So you do have to set that. And as long as it's set to at least yes, if it's set to yes and stamp cert date, what will happen is when they print it, the date is going to be stamped. But as long as it's just yes, uh, it will be in that, that list of, of options for certificates to print. Uh, there is some other setup. Uh, there's, there's some behind the scenes kind of stuff that needs to be done. Uh, we could say get web certificate on the registration record all day, uh, but you do also have to do a little bit of work over on the, um, the course record. Uh, you have the option, there is a default certificate that gets set up an ACE web default certificate uh, if you have something like a one-off that you need for a specific kind of course, you can set that here. Uh, if we're talking about transcripts, uh, you, you can decide whether or not the transcript or the, the course shows up on a transcript, right? Like maybe we don't care about memberships or donations showing on a, a transcript that we're printing online. You can actually change that setting there. So over here, I'm probably logged out, but We'll try it anyway. Yeah. So in Ace Web, back to my history. So I can again in the in the registrations filter, I can look at only my personal registrations. I can look at everything I've entered uh, or registrations just for one other person. So I'm actually, you know what, Joe, we're gonna use him here. Everything that I've entered just for Joe, I could pull a transcript. And those are going to be his courses, right? Or I think I have to actually, yeah, have to select just one person at a time because otherwise that transcript would be nuts. But every registration I've entered, if I want to look at all of my certificates, they're all here for me. So I could get a certificate for Charlie and print that out. So this is especially helpful, um, you know, if you have a lot of contract courses or firms registering a bunch of people, if, if they're doing that online, that person is already going to be set as the proxy. So they can then come in and print certificates for all of their employees if they need to. Do we have questions about this? No. All right. Cool, cool, cool. And so that's that's individual students, but now the newer feature this year in 22 is that it also works for folks that you've enrolled for, for proxy registrations. But okay, so ACEWeb is really cool for students, but are there staff options? Are there things that staff can do? Maybe. <laughs> Bulletins and warnings. So in ACEWeb, you can display or remove messages on, on the website. So my demo, for example, at the very top, you will see in red, example warning message. So warnings can go at the top of the page. Also, we can move these for you if you, if you like this, but you don't really want the warning at the very top, we can, we can place it somewhere else. Uh, and also in blue, where it says today only, save money when enrolling, no coupon necessary, that's a bulletin. So basically, every, think of everything as a bulletin, but warnings... Uh, you actually select that it's going to be a warning, and so it shows up in a different color, basically. These are set up in Student Manager in Module Catalog Ace Web Bulletin. You can use HTML, and we do have the HTML editor button available for you right there on the screen. So you can do, you know, maybe add a link or change the color, the font size, image, basic things like that. You can set them to active or inactive, just like you can with catalog records. It's at the same, same place at the top of the screen. So if it's active, it will be published. If it's inactive, it's not published. And then the bulletin type, whether it's a regular bulletin or a warning, <clears throat> excuse me. If it's, it, you, it will be a bulletin unless you check the box at the top middle that says warning bulletin. And you can set an expiration date. So you know what, we're all getting ready to maybe have two days off, or if you're Arlington Public Schools, you're getting two weeks. <laughs> so you might want to set up a bulletin 
uh, or a warning or something on your page that says, hey, we're not going to be here for two weeks because we're really lucky and we get two whole weeks of not being in the office. Okay, so you can set the expiration, it'll automatically come down. So here's the thing, you create them in Student Manager. You cannot create them in AceWeb, but you can do things like look them up, uh, publish them, uh, modify them if you need to, unpublish, and that's all through Staff Web Access. And there's a link that says Edit Bulletins. When you click on that link, Assuming that you have the proper AceWeb access permissions in Student Manager, okay. So if you're not sure if you do, you may want to, you know, get with the person who, you know, your your keeper of the flame who sets it up. Uh, if you have those abilities, you can go check it out for yourself under Tools, Password Maintenance, and AceWeb middle page right around the middle of the screen where it says AceWeb. Whatever is set there and also in your AceWeb INI preferences. So you have to have those two things match. As long as they do, you can get in, log in, find your bulletins, you can look them up. You can change the text here if you need to. So if you have just a stock campus closed today due to snowstorm or we're delayed two hours, Roll, I'm sorry I'm picking on you. It's only because we talked this morning. And so I've got like, you know, real live fresh examples in my head. Uh, you can come in here very quickly, you know, all right, we've got a delay and just put in what you need to there and make sure it's published. If it's not published over on the right hand side, you check this box that says publish. Is this new? Is this, is this new in 22? <laughs> They're scared to answer now. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think it's new in 22. Okay, okay. we Thanks. think it's new. It's actually not new. Um, it's it's a it's it's new-ish, but it's not new to this calendar year. I think it was last year, um, sort of mid to late last year, right? right? Unless I'm remembering it wrong. So, it's it's not super new in 22, but it may very well be new to you. You can edit other things with staff web access as well. Also, if you want to get bulletins and warnings set up, if it's if you're not sure if you have it configured, get with your tech. It's just there's a couple little tags that we need to add on your foundation ace web templates, and then it will be there for you to use. So in this staff web access, you can also edit course information. And I will tell you, this is new-ish. It is not new this year. I don't remember if I had the question on there or not. Uh, but it's super, super cool. Um, once you log in, you have all of your courses. So all the courses in the system uh, that are active, you can also, there's a checkbox to include inactive courses. If for some reason you need to edit an inactive course, I guess first you would want to think, well, why do I need to edit information online about something that's not active? Well, I don't know you might need to reactivate it, right? So that, that might be a time to use it, but you select your course and you get into a modify screen and it looks remarkably similar to student manager, right? You've got your main tab, you've got additional info, fees, instructors. Let me actually get in here and do this live for you. Maybe it'll make a little more sense, a little easier to see. Mm -hmm. So staff options, edit course information. And I just select a course, I don't know, mastering student manager. Wow, there's a lot of extra R's here. That doesn't seem right. Maybe I should change it. You can change the title. Uh, if you need to change the type, if you need to cancel or you know deactivate it, that's all there for you. Print location, attendance, date open. So pretty much everything that is on the course record in Student Manager, I think you're gonna see here. So if you needed to add attachments, if you're using logical fields, fees, not quite yet, instructors, you know, comments if you need to add those on there, any AceWeb info, so maybe you need to, you know, set a different lag date. If it's hybrid, maybe you need to change the max, you know, physical max. I actually, I got a smaller room, so I need to change that to three people and everyone else is gonna have to go virtual. So once you've made your changes, I don't believe, yeah, you can't change the course code and that's that's with good reason. So your course code exists because once, once we start 
changing course codes, then we get deleted records in the background and the system gets a little, a little cranky about that. Once you've done it, you save it. And that's that, your changes have been saved. Also, you're going to get an email that says a course record was updated and who updated the record. So if you have your ACEWeb INI, your, your preference is set to notify the office, you will get an email that lets you know that something was changed. And that also has been around a little bit. It's new-ish, it's new-ish, but not new this calendar year. I know I went through that pretty quickly. Anything you wanna see again? Do we wanna just review the list of what's new in 22 and what's what uh, what might be new to you? So if you have questions, you know, and bring them on, throw them in there. Curious how many here today are using the SAP Web Access. And you get raise your hand if you are using that. Okay, thanks, Dave. All right. It just the one. Okay. I think Carolyn, I think you're using it, right? Uh let's see. You do have a question. How do students yeah. choose if they're hybrid or in person? Ooh, that's a good question. Great question. So over in Student Manager, let me find a hybrid course. Make sure I've got decent numbers here. Uh, let me change it to, I don't know, 15. So when you're setting up your course, it actually, the, the type is hybrid. And you do have to set over on the hybrid tab, the, the physical max, right? So maybe it's it's 15 and the whole max of the course on the main tab is 50, right? So that means I can have, oh, if I did math, it's what, 35, I suppose, is the number uh, that could be virtual, but only 15 in person. And you do have to set up fees, a physical attendance and a virtual attendance fee. Let me get that out of there. And you do have to set which type it is. So it wouldn't necessarily have to say physical attendance, virtual attendance, but we do have to put the type over here. So when we're enrolling, uh, who do I have in here? Oh man, um, that's okay. You know what, we'll go through staff web access. That'll make it easier to do. Uh, um, are you wanting to see yeah. what it looks like for the student view through ACEWeb? Yes. So okay. if we can show an example, maybe in our online sandbox of what that yeah, looks yeah. like, yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna um, set that up actually in here. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little bit of setup to get to where we're going. So I can even, so a student might log on or I'm just gonna enroll someone myself. Select someone. Oh, let's see, enroll in a course. I'm just going to go up here because I have the code. So enrolling, so enroll yourself. And then you actually get the option, as long as there is an option still, to select which, which fee. So uh, you can choose whether it's physical or virtual. So that's how students would be able to do it. If the maximum has been reached, right? So we'll say we're back to three again. When they try to enroll, they will only get the option to choose virtual. So if it's, if it's available, you can choose either one. If physical is no longer available, then it will force virtual. So good question, good question. So things that we covered, these are the, uh, we, we did 10 of each. So, you know, 10 new in the calendar year 22, uh, you know, code drop down, individual transcripts, just like you could send invoices or certificates, a hybrid name roster, pay attention to those okay and cancel buttons because I still get them wrong. Uh, some changes to the payment screen, AW Storm now works with proxies, staff chooser, all of those. And things that might be new to you, passwords, adding codes on the fly, function keys, special button and callbacks, 
links to pay balances, uh, AW Storm for the individual student, bulletins, warning messages, and editing course information. So any questions or anything that you think you know, is, is a pretty great feature from this year that, you know, is, is something you want to share with the group or what, uh, any comments, questions, concerns?